Good morning, Table Talk. I hope everyone is staying safe and staying inside and being healthy. Uh, You can stay verbally connected by saying wonderful, kind words to each other. Uh, Invisible hello and invisible hugs. Let's do that. (laughs) But instead, make sure everyone is uh, safe distancing and make sure we're wearing our masks. Today's uh, topic today, I did say I was going to talk about uh, cluster B and borderline personality disorder. And that is one of my uh, diseases, but I wanted to break apart uh, cluster B personality disorder. I did talk about uh, the borderline personality disorder, but I also want to talk about the other ones. There's histrionic personality disorder, there is narcissistic personality disorder, and there is antisocial personality disorder. So today I'm going to talk about my experiences with histrionic personality disorder and uh, narcissistic personality disorder, and then uh, because I I've had experiences with uh, the symptoms kind of coming together in some of my uh, episodes. So when, uh, for the definition of histrionic, histrionic uh, disorder, personality disorder is a person with histrionic personality disorder seeks attention, talks drastically with strong opinions, is easily influenced, has rapidly changing emotions, and thinks relationships are closer than they are. Remember, uh, if you can remember before, I did talk about delusions. In some delusions, you do have this, um, in in your thinking, this uh, delusion that uh, a relationship is really more than it really is. I've had episodes of histrionic that carried some of the narcissistic symptoms in it where um, if someone is approaching me and they are responding to me with a simple a greeting, that greeting in my mind turns into something deeper than just a simple superficial greeting and my I would respond in a deeper response such as handing in my phone number or uh, 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 giving them a response of uh, I'm interested in you too by saying okay drinks tonight or uh, maybe uh, dinner or something and then I will get a re-response saying Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't hitting on you, you know, I was just saying hello. And that's the thinking you have when you're dealing with uh, histrionic uh, thinking. It kind of sometimes, for me, the symptoms along with narcissistic symptoms, they kind of play around, they play together, and they also play separate. I've also had experience where they play separate too. So histrionic, when his, uh, for histrionic thinking uh, symptoms, I would have uh, very opinionated conversations and if my conversation is not received as being the most important, then I will have a irresponsible response. That would be my histrionic uh, episode. And then I will have, on the other hand, I will have a narcissistic behavior. I will have, um, if someone didn't see me as being uh, some sense of a, uh, the leader or the, uh, or if I come in the door, I am perceived as being the highlighted, uh, individual of the day. And you should just run over and say, oh, um, I should be, uh, praised because she's coming in the door or something like that. It's just your, and keep in mind, this is just your thinking your thought process and if i'm not perceived to be the number one person 
or this godly uh, individual that people see me as, then you will have an irresponsible response. What is that irresponsible response? You'll get an attitude or either you'll start misbehaving or you'll start talking uh, with a, a sarcastic uh, uh, statements or just being very rude to people. And, and that's how those work. And it's, it goes deeper than that because histrionic and narcissistic behaviors, they work separately and they work together. And it, believe it or not, that's why they call them cluster B personality disorder because you're gonna have borderline personality uh, disorder. They're gonna work hand in hand with antisocialism. And then it works hand in hand with histrionic. Then it works hand in hand with uh, narcissistic. That they All four of them work hand in hand and they can work separately. So you have to be careful and do your self-assessment to start paying attention to your symptoms so you can apply positive antidotes and positive practices to those symptoms so you won't have an irresponsible response. See, that's the ultimate goal. You want to pay attention to those symptoms so you can identify them, which is a, a, a very sensitive area because you can tell when your mood is changing, when your conversation changes, when your thought process wants you to behave irresponsibly. So when you think, sometimes when I, I, I speak to uh, delusions, when you speak to delusions, you'd be like, wait, I have to stop myself and say, wait, before I think that this person is trying to hit on me, let me verify by getting some tangible information from this individual. By simply doing just a simple question as, uh, are you asking me out? Yes or no? I mean, get something definitive, get something tangible. You know, I just want to be sure so I can respond correctly. There's nothing wrong with getting that type of information before you respond because delusions are, they're real, they're real smart and they play tricks on you and it's a real thin threshold. So I want you to be real careful and realize that those things can have you doing irresponsible responses and you don't want to do that. Now, narcissistic, narcissistic behaviors are one of those behaviors that have you in that godly thinking, like everything should be about you. You should be highlighted in every conversation or you should be uh, praised uh, in every situation or I remember me holding a holding a conference and when I hold a conference, you know, I was in my mind, in, in my thinking, I was hoping everyone was saying, oh yes, oh Lynn, your conversation and your conference was super, super awesome. And I didn't get that. What I got was a clap and everybody left the building. And I was like, what? No, everybody was supposed to uh, give me a crown on my head and bow down and give me super praises and stuff like that. But that's just my thinking. So when you don't get that, that means you go right into your uh, thought process and say, okay, I did the conference. I got the claps. That's enough. There is nothing more. And shut your shut your 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 thought process off and say that is it, you know, because you have to keep your narcissistic thinking under control and your histrionic thinking under control because both of them put together is like dynamite. Because then they'll have you having irresponsible responses, looking for some sense of a holy recognition. That's what I call that, and that's. That's not what you're going to get. So those personalities, uh, those are really, really uh, kind of something you look out for and then pay attention to, as well as anti-socialism. Anti-socialism is very, very uh, 
for me, anti-socialism is, I see people as threats. And maybe I'll go into that. Yeah, I think I'll go into that a little more uh, on another on another video. I see people as threats. And that's more of a delusion too. I see individuals plotting to hurt me, plotting to harm me. I think that's a mixture of anti-socialism with a little bit of PTSD, which I have. And I'm very standoffish. So that's my irresponsible response with that. I don't stop standoffish. So if I'm standoffish, I don't communicate well. And I'm very quiet. So I have to make sure I bring some sense of a antidote to that because I want to do seminars and I want to speak to people and I want to make sure I get the message out that you can thrive with mental illness and thriving with mental illness means facing off with those symptoms and not letting those symptoms control your life. You have them under control where your mind is out of balance. So when I I'm able to get on a elevator and not think that individuals are trying to harm me. I'm able to go to work and not think there's a plot against me. Or I'm able to go to work and have someone say something to me and it's not a trigger. So trick work triggers. I will be talking about that going forward because those are experiences that I have too. You at work and you have uh, statements being made that are just, you know, they're innocent statements, but we perceive them as triggers. How do we handle those triggers? I believe in self-assessment. Self-assessment means first stop, deep scan your brain for truth, and then start applying your positive antidotes and your positive components to those symptoms immediately. So your trigger is, what do you feel right now? I feel anger. Is anger one of those symptoms you feel? Let's apply an antidote to that anger. Did that person really mean what they said to trigger you anger? And what is the overall consequence of you responding to that anger? Is that beneficial? So we have to scan. It's almost like we have to scan the entire process of how that's going to look if that plays out. And then, of course, we want to respond in a way where we keep our jobs, number one. Definitely never keep our jobs. And number two, we make sure we respond responsibly. Workplace triggers, atmospheric triggers. I'm going to talk about atmospheric triggers. Sometimes deep depression comes over your head like a cloud of rain. It rains over your head and you want to just take a day off. I'm going to speak to some of those days. It's like treat yourself. Treat yourself to a day off. It's okay to have those boundaries and understand that you just need a day off. I know I've done plenty of those days to just give myself a day to wind down. dealing with mental illness and thriving with mental illness is taking a day off. You still thrive with it. Ride a bike, do some yoga, work out, take it in a movie, shop. I love to shop. Do something that day that's thriving. Giving yourself a day effort.